I'm Ray Thompson, I work for Siemens Wind Power in the UK and I'm Head of Business Development. So my role is a lot about uh, policy, regulation, informing our business, but a key part of my role is also engagement with the supply chain. Obviously, um, like all the renewable energies, we are very keen to grow our supply chain and particularly local content and UK supply chain. Particularly in the, in the offshore wind sector, of course, we're putting these turbines in an incredibly harsh environment. We'll have turbines far out at sea, perhaps 100 miles offshore. So naturally, we're facing all of the corrosion and salt issues that the oil and gas industry and other kind of far offshore businesses have faced for a long time. Uh, wind offshore is quite a, quite a young industry, though. We're still pretty much at the early stages of developing that. And of course, what we're trying to do is get more life extension from the turbines we put out there. So the new machines going out now, we would expect to be in the water for 25 years and some of the key components potentially used for repowering. So corrosion protection is a, is a massive issue. Um, a real mix of kind of where uh, galvanising and other um, protection technologies are used in the industry. Obviously the foundations themselves are very large steel structures. Within the turbine itself, of course, there's the usual range of um, components of brackets, cable trays, all of the kind of smaller items, and of course a lot of protection around the turbine itself. Offshore wind is still a relatively new industry. I think we're doing things that we've very much learnt from oil and gas, but there is a lot of scope for innovation. There's clearly ways that we could do things better. Of course, we are putting equipment both under the water and in the kind of splash zone area, as well as the tower and the kind of upper structures. So there is a lot of uh, physical demands, um, particularly with boat landings, secondary steel work, that are taking quite a lot of physical abuse as well as the environmental abuse. So we definitely feel that there's scope there for more innovation to come in in terms of how we protect the structures, the components offshore, to really ensure that long life uh, far offshore at sea. Wind and, and offshore wind in particular is a key part of uh, government energy policy going forward and not just in the UK but really across Europe and increasingly worldwide. We see it as a kind of key part of the energy mix for the future. Uh, this means there'll be a big growth. We are one of the few uh, perhaps engineering areas where there's a big kind of compound growth rate forecast and new markets opening up in Asia and in the US that really haven't started yet. UK leads the world on offshore wind. But in the UK alone we expect that over the next few years we might see um, around a thousand turbines going into water and each turbine has over a thousand tonnes of steel counting the foundation, the tower, the turbine itself. So obviously there's a lot of steel work going in the North Sea in a very harsh environment and obviously corrosion protection, galvanising has a key part to make sure that those components are out there and uh, are functioning as intended for a very long time.